Oh man, I am so jealous. It's summer and my students are all very excited over taking some vacation and increasing their business trips. Business trip! I can't say I blame them. It gets so cold up north that it's totally understandable if they want to grab a few UV rays when they can. I mean, look at me. You can see I'm dressed like I live in Antarctica. So understandably, I want to get in on the action and of course, I am super excited for them if they get vacation time. Yay! Summer's here! Awesome! Best summer ever! Like a proud mother hen, I love to prepare my students for vacation time and business trips. But how can we do this? How do we prepare a student for vacation and business trips? Well, I personally enjoy the free talk. I want to know every last detail about their plans. Where will they be visiting? When will they visit? How long will they visit for? What are they looking forward to the most? Have they been there before? What weather can they expect? Because come on, let's face it, the weather is unpredictable. Again, I want to know everything. I want to know everything. After all, I will be stuck indoors while they go and enjoy a new destination. So I like to live vicariously through my students, okay? No judgment, please. Secondly, doing some vocabulary work is an absolute must, guys. If my student is going on vacation, we look at what they have packed and name the items in English such as sandals, a sarong, and a wide-rimmed beach hat. My favorite for someone with nice big sunglasses. So you can get really creative here by knowing about the type of vacation the student will take. Is it a cruise? Then we also cover cruise terminology such as port side and starboard side. This information would be crucial in case of an emergency, guys. In addition to this, you can also go over some useful sentences to know in case an emergency arises and help is needed. This is especially useful if your student is below intermediate level. But what if your student is traveling for business and not pleasure? Shame. My condolences. Well, it's up to us to make it fun, don't you think? I'll try. Find out what the purpose is for the business trip. Will there be an important meeting? Will it be in English? Better yet, will he be traveling to a country where he will need to communicate in English? That's quite critical. This is your opportunity to discuss some business etiquette in other countries or the country he will be visiting so that he can be prepared. A fantastic topic would be business phrasal verbs and idioms. In fact, it's the most popular topic in business English. This way, you can prepare him for some English speakers who love to drop these expressions during a discussion or a meeting. Phrasal verbs and idioms can be extremely confusing. Imagine your student's confusion in a meeting where expressions such as across the board, take on board, are you on board? Are used and they have no clue how to respond or what these expressions even mean? Let's do them a favor and educate them on these important business expressions and business etiquette in different countries. This way, their business trip can go smoothly and also confidently. They might even come back and say, you know, thanks to you, my business trip went smoothly. Thanks to proper preparation, the business trip felt like a vacation instead of a stressful work trip. So where can I get useful information, Hannah? Right here in your cabinet of inbox. General English for traveling is a great start when we talk about general vacation vocabulary and it's also available in beginner, elementary and pre-intermediate level. No matter the level of your student, I bet you there will be new vocabulary he or she has never seen before. Another one is general English. Illness and treatment? First aid topics. But how does this connect to traveling, Hannah? Well, guys, life happens. Even on a business trip or vacation, life happens. Accidents and illnesses happen. I'm too old for this shit. What if your student falls ill or has an allergic reaction? Will he or she be able to communicate and explain their condition to an English doctor? Will they be able to describe the degree of pain? What if they are an allergic to a certain medication and need to communicate this urgently? Yeah, let that sink in. You wouldn't want to be in that situation either, would you? So in addition to Vimbox, there is a wealth of resources available online. A quick Google or Yandex search can deliver some interesting YouTube videos or content that is brilliant for discussion. You just have to find it. Well, those are my tips for vacation and business trip English. I hope you found this video helpful. Enjoy your summer vacation if you take it and think of those who are getting cold. <laughs> Bye.